I am feeling a bit lost. I'm looking for my car keys. I found my purse and um, I've got gloves and I've got mask. Oh, here's another mask. Uh, I have my cell phone. This is good. So let me check my coat pocket. Yes, yes, here they are. But this reminds me of the day when I felt really lost. And I mean really, really lost. I was looking for my keys. I was searching everywhere in all of these same places. And I was even looking between the cushions in my sofa. And I couldn't find them. Knowing that I would be late, I called my friend who I was supposed to be meeting and she said, pray to Saint Anthony, who is the saint of lost things. In a moment I des of desperation, I prayed, dear Saint Anthony, please come around my car keys that are lost and cannot be found. I thought she was a bit crazy. Saints were not part of my faith tradition then. I'm not clear why. Maybe it was because I didn't feel so alone in my search, but sure enough, I found my car keys thanks to St. Anthony. This may not be a surprise to some of you, but it was for me. This experience caused me to pause and to think about who and what saints are. St. Anthony and St. Francis. Well, they're two saints that have captured the popular imagination, I think. Both of these folks were held up in the Christian tradition because they were seen to have been given God-given gifts, such as the ability to find lost things. Who doesn't need someone to help them with finding things that are lost? Or who doesn't want to be like St. Francis, who loved and could speak to animals and all of creation? Saints often were named as such because they were seen to be using their gifts, often sacrificing their lives to live in a particular kind of way, to bring about a new world, one that was anchored in a faith tradition. Like Jesus, who received a special gift of redeeming or restoring lost things. Now, saints aren't perfect. Often, we don't hear about their flaws. Folks venerated um, Saint Teresa of Calcutta. Her greatest gift was that she could see people as one, despite the caste system that they may have been born into. Some did wonder about her medical practices. Now, one day after Halloween, the day where we are supposed to wear disguises to deceive evil spirits of those who have died, we are called to remember the saints that have been part of our lives. Personally, there are many folks in my life who have blessed me with great gifts, and sometimes not always in the way I would like to receive them. Now, Howard Washington Thruman was an African author, philosopher, theologian, educator, and a civil rights leader, tells the story of growing up in a neighborhood that was torn by hate between races and how the family next door to his, the white family next door to his, hated him and his grandmother. In the darkness of the night, the neighbors scraped up chicken manure off the floor of the chicken coop and dumped it into Grandma Thurman's garden. Sometime later, the woman who had committed this act became ill, and Grandma Thurman, being a person of faith, realized that she had to transcend the acts that had been done to her and put her faith into action. She decided to do something nice for this woman who had tormented her. She shared some of her lovely cut flowers, roses from her garden. Surprised at the beauty, the ill woman asked how she was able to grow such gardens, such beautiful flowers in her garden. She said, you remember that chicken manure that you dumped in my backyard? You saw it as something evil, but the God that I serve saw that as fertilizer. And my work is to win you with the beauty that came out of the ashes you dumped on me. 
I'd like to think that this grandma was a saint, one who was able, despite great disparity and lived experience of racism and oppression, was able to find a blessing in the darkness, darkest of places, creating space for one who was lost to be found. Now those who would gather around Jesus wondered how they could live their lives as blessed people of the light to create the world that God dreams of. Susanna Bates of St. Paul's in Sydney is going to read our scripture passage today from the book of Matthew. You are blessed when you are at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God. You are blessed when you feel you have lost what is most dear to you. Only then can you be embraced by the one most dear to you. You are blessed when you are content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can't be bought. You're blessed when you've worked up a good appetite for God. God is food and drink in the best meal you'll ever eat. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you'll find yourselves cared for. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your heart and mind, put right. Then you can see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are and your place in God's family. You're blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. The persecution drives you even deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, count yourselves blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you to discredit me. My prophets and witnesses have always gotten into this kind of trouble. If this is how Jesus defined who is blessed, which included those who were lost and found, folks who were part of a creative and diverse community, then I have many candles to light this evening as I remember the people who have joined me on a journey, as I have joined them to bring about the world God dreams of. So tonight, I light candles to honor all of my ancestors, those who have formed and informed me. Sounds like a beautiful and blessed community. Ooh, a faith. That one's kind of hot. Yikes. Smoke detectors coming. <laughs>